welcome to another episode of Let's Make It. This is episode number 53, and it's recorded with us today, the 24th of February in 2014. And we actually haven't been here for, what, two weeks, I believe. Um, different things came up. I actually went the first Monday. I actually had to go to a viewing, so it uh, took a little more importance than this. But then last week, we just didn't work. Did it get a chance to get one in, so... Uh, we tried a couple different days and just never worked out, so we decided just to wait until today. And uh, today, we're, Bob's going to show us some stuff he's been working on. And uh, let's see. Where's Bob? There's Bob. How you doing, Bob? Hello. Hello. How's it, how you been doing? I'm doing good. So we actually got in some warm weather. Yeah. Well, it's it's been very nice here. Yeah. Don't rub it in because it's cold again here. It was nice. It, it was nice here, and now it's cold. So maybe so you can get some more snow. Know that I was wearing shorts today. So. Uh, no, nope. Okay. That would that that information I don't really care to know. Okay. <laughs> uh, so that, a lot of things have happened in the last couple weeks since I've since we've been going. I'm going to show a couple of things here uh, shortly that actually I've been working on, uh, which keep me busy. Uh, been doing some video uh, install type work as well. So um, one of the things I want to talk about was this is something I'm showing in upcoming weeks. This is uh, one of our new cameras, and you see a little thing hanging off there. That's an Ethernet adapter. So this camera has Ethernet control. So I'm going to be building a control, physical control, to control the camera. These cameras don't have a CCU or a camera control unit that can control them, but they're web-based. So you can log into a web page. Well, I'm going to try to take an Arduino and use physical controls to control the camera remotely. So it's kind of simulating a CCU and that type of function. So last time, Bob, maybe it was two times ago, I showed you this panel that I had gotten, the white panel. Actually, it's, I can show it to you before I turn it on and, and blind everybody, this white panel. So over the last couple weeks, I've actually been playing with it. It's actually pretty impressive. Uh, it's very bright. Actually, it's a little, probably a little too bright. Um, and it's very neat how you can program each individual pixel. And I'm going to plug it in, and it's going to get really bright really quickly. So uh, actually, let me unplug the Arduino before I plug it in. And hopefully this works. Well, I, it was working earlier. I, I, <laughs> yeah. I did see it working. Yes, yeah, so I'm going to go plug the Arduino in. And it's probably going to get right. Okay, so this is working the way it's supposed to work. So you're going to see a bunch of patterns coming around. You see the, the more things that come out. It gets uh, brighter and brighter. But you can see each pixel can be individually addressed. And this is that 2812 chip that basically has a, a mini shift register on each on each LED. So you can basically do RGB using one wire. You can't see it now, but there's one wire right here that is the control, and this other wire is just the ground for reference. So you're going to see it right now. It's going to the rainbow effect. It's going to go through a bunch of, bunch of things that we've that I was playing with and different shapes and blinking and things like that. So um, a very impressive panel. It does t does tend to get very warm. Uh, you probably can't tell exactly how bright it is. Actually, if you look at my face, you can kind of see it right here. That's all off that panel. So it is quite bright. But it's uh, it's one of the coolest things I'll play with as far as an LED array because the the control you have over it. And, you know, I play with the things that are, you know, three colors of the whole panel or the whole strip turns one, you know, one color. So this is it's pretty neat. I don't remember taking this long in the rainbow effect, but it'll go through and do other blinking things and walking. And oh, there's there's the red, the red and blue. Well, it's kind of hard to tell on the camera or my eyes are blind. I can't tell which at this point. But it's pretty neat with things you can do with it. I mean, you, to individually address a 16 by 16 LED array is um, is pretty impressive, actually. And you can see I'm going to do different sizes. I just have an algorithm that I've, I created that can do a bunch of different things, and I just call them. Basically, one line does all the blinking and everything going back and forth. It's pretty cool. Yeah, and there you see it's dim. That's how it's turned on all the colors, probably. There's red, white, and blue. That was the Olympic theme. I think I was watching Olympics when I wrote this, actually. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so, um, so, yeah, all kinds of different things. Actually, and I also got some stuff like um, different shapes, too, which will come up here. And you can do you know, anything you can program into an array or any kind of pixel um, type image. It's 16 by 16. You can pretty much draw out and have it, have it you know, put out to there. 
it's almost done, I believe. Yeah, you can see how it's playing with different different widths of bars. The algorithm I wrote basically allows you to do one, two, or three colors, and how wide do you want the bars, and do on the walk, or actually, I think you do four colors. I did one, two, I did one, two, three, and four. It looks funny on the camera, like it's bending, kind of. Yeah, that's very bright. Oh, there, yeah, there's an X in the night. I don't know. I'm going to take on the rotation of it out, but I had a thing where I was rotating the X in a circle. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, I was just showing, did you do a, do a shape in the background? Just the different functions that I wrote. And that's, I think that's the last thing it does at this before it starts over. So, um, that was uh, something I've been playing with actually over the last. Uh, couple of weeks that was one of the things i've been playing with in addition to the cameras and a bunch of other things that, that's going on and you can kind of see how bright it is and i'll i'll wait till i go to bob to unplug it because it's kind of noisy to unplug uh the way i got it set up so um bob you're going to do the gps thing tonight do you have a second thing you're going to do as well no not tonight okay no we're i didn't finish it okay no that's fine i wasn't i wasn't sure i hadn't heard for sure if you if you had a chance to get done or not so that's what i was going to ask um Let's see here. I'm going to fix up your screen real quick here. There you go. Oh, did it again. You work hard for your business. Your website should too. No matter what industry you're in, Select your customizable high-quality design with professionally written content and graphic elements created for your business. Make changes online whenever you like. Switch your background color, page layout, and text anytime. Add your pictures and logo. Upgrade your website with useful one-in-one -one web apps. And integrate social media. Upload your photo albums and embed videos. With one click, optimize your website for viewing on mobile devices. Choose your free domain or you can easily transfer an existing one. Thanks to one in ones SEO tools, customers can find you everywhere. one in one My Website, a professional website created by you. When you open up an Audible audiobook, it opens up your imagination. Enjoy a steamy romance while ironing the sheets. Discover an historic battle while battling the bulge at the gym. Visit audible.com slash free books now to try two books absolutely free. Get caught up in a whodunit during a do-it-yourself project. Listen anytime, anywhere with the Audible mobile app. When you're out for a walk, learn how to climb the corporate ladder. Or bring a little magic to your minivan with a fantasy novel. With over 100,000 titles, Audible is an amazing experience that you can now try absolutely free. And just like our books, there's no binding. Our Great Listen Guarantee lets you exchange a title you don't like for another. No questions asked. Visit audible.com slash freebooks to download two books of your choice right now. This week we we're gonna let me switch over the camera. The uh, this is a little um, project that actually started off as a viewer request about how to how could you use an Arduino to make a a GPS tracker. So I have an Ardu I have an Arduino and it's actually running right now. And we'll switch to the uh, we'll switch to the terminal window that's. Um, 
going, and it actually just picked up my location. Uh, we were talking about, the, uh, Mike and I were talking about this before the show, that after a while, it will actually pick up my my location. Um, and I'm where I'm at is buried in a three-story building in a in a condo building and I happen to be in the bottom floor 25 feet from a window and this this unit and this little uh, uh, antenna is good enough to actually pick up where I'm at eventually um, and we'll look at some raw data but what I did was I made this uh, GPS shield and an Arduino, some very simple code. And then I went to a local store and got this uh, USB with a barrel connector on it. And, you know, like lots of other people, I've got my iPhone charger in my car. And I just unplugged it and plugged this in. And, and within a, uh, a minute or so, this thing is uh, logging data onto the onto the SD card. So let me switch to my desktop and then we can look at some code. So it is pretty impressive that you're inside a building like that and it's picking up that. So how yeah. accurate is it, do you think, whenever you're in the building? Is um, I, we could probably look. When I, when I checked, when I discovered that this worked, it was pretty darn close. And in the data that we... I've got some sample data that I did a few few days ago uh, when I was out running errands, and I just let it, you know, plugged it into the car and let it go, uh, and it could pick out the correct lane in the highway that I was in. So that's impressive. I remember back in the day, you get GPSs, you'd be like in the middle of the field for it to pick up any any kind right. of satellite. Yeah, and this one it uh, it's it's done really well uh, tracking me, um, almost too well. Uh, but the code, uh, well, here let me let me come back over here. Um, here's the shield that um, that we're that's that we're using, and you'll see. Let me zoom in right here. They have these. Uh, they have all of these little jumpers right here and you have to set which pins you're using and then you can use the soft serial library uh, in from from Arduino so you can connect uh, so you can collect the serial data from this in a terminal window at the same time you're logging the data and and still upload new code so, you know, there's always a conflict if you're using pins one and two uh, with serial data. You've, you've got a conflict because that's the same pins the Arduino is talking to a computer with. So this lets you switch the pins, and I'm actually using pins two and three, and we'll see that in the code. Uh, but it's a, it's a, you know, it's a nice little, nice little shield SD card reasonably priced and obviously with this antenna works really well so, so. a couple of things we, we've never really gone through the software serial stuff we probably should do that at some point well we've never really um talked about yeah, the additional is, yeah, that isn't something we've talked about because yeah, i never i've actually known if i've ever used it myself i've read about it but i mean it's pretty simple to use i understand but um i've always like if i ever do multiple serials i'm generally using like a mega which has three serial ports on it so Right, and with an Arduino, it's just got the one, and with a Leonardo, there's only one. And when I actually started this demo, I actually started it with a Leonardo and had trouble with it, and it was because of the way a Leonardo handles serial data. And as soon as I switched to an Uno and used the soft serial library, uh, it started working. Now, I can go back and get a Leo to work, um, but it we need to do some other things and I just didn't bother doing it since I got it to work with my Uno. So, um, the code, this, this code, I actually, it's essentially, uh, the code that came from the tiny, I'm using the tiny GPS library 
And this is essentially the what's called the simple, uh, I think it's called simple example. Um, yeah, simple test. I'm sorry, simple test. This is essentially a modified simple test. And I've got the soft serial library. I'm going to write to an SD card. And so there's only two functions in here, ser the setup and the loop. So I've got a, a serial connection back to the terminal window. And you can actually see the terminal window running down here in the corner. Uh, and then I've got the uh, soft serial connection to the GPS unit itself. The, uh, when I talked to tech support, which uh, since I was having trouble with the Leo and I also had a problem with the, uh, the tiny GPS, uh, some of the software in a different example, I contacted um, tech support and they were, I was very impressed. They were very quick with answers back and were quite helpful. Uh, but one of the things they told me was that, that 38400 is the preferred speed for the serial connection with the GPS. So that's what I've set. Um, the, uh, this code right here comes out of the simple test example. Uh, this code, Mike, you should recognize this because it's essentially the same code that you had in your, um, in your example a few weeks ago with an SD card. Right. So, and it uses pin 10, just, just like, uh, uh, normal. And then the loop, we wait one second for it to connect, uh, to, to collect data. And then we're sending that data to the screen. And if you didn't have your serial monitor connected, you could just comment that out and we're collecting the the raw data and that's being recorded onto the onto the SD card right now and here's the serial monitor and this is the data that's coming off of it and this is real time data that actually figured out where i was at which was very surprising yeah that is surprising so i can think of a couple of things other than even location so are you familiar with a um, a Strata One time device or Strata Two, either one? No, uh, no, I'm not. So basically, it's basically Strata One is like the actual atomic clock for the most part, and it, like it is the device that keeps the time. GPS runs off that Strata One, so you could take that time and build like an NTP time server. And yes, it, very inexpensively. I mean, if you ever went out and bought an NTP server that has a a strata connection it's very expensive we're talking thousand two thousand dollars and here we're talking about what under a hundred oh for this uh i don't have uh, you know if somebody were to go buy an uno a gps unit this this antenna i think was eight bucks um the uh barrel usb connector was three dollars you know this whole thing uh, i don't think the whole thing is what sixty five dollars? Yeah, so 70? I think I think I'm gonna experiment with that because I mean I have you can do it over the internet, but sometimes it's just nice to be disconnected or somewhere where you have a strata one clock. Um, especially like you know, all the broadcast stuff that I do, the clocks that are broadcast quality that do strata one type connections are very very expensive. I can build a common clock for hardly anything comparatively. Yeah, yeah. This is this is really inexpensive to get the clock. And of course, all we're doing is reading, you know, I'm not doing anything with this data, but just grabbing it off of the off the GPS and throwing it into a log file. And you could easily strip out the time and the date. And, and of course, it's UTC time that you're getting. So right. You know, right now, you know, I'm in the central time zone and it's, you know, eight, you know, 37 my time. And it's it's actually showing, you know, 0237 because I'm six hours off from UTC. Right. So. So, yeah, it would be very easy to strip out date and time out of that GPS string and and do something with it. And I'm not doing anything here. 
but just grabbing it and uh, logging it onto the SD card. So, and this is actually the data. This is what the data looks like um, that uh, that I collected one afternoon, um, and you can tell that it, uh, you know, it once you plug it in, it does take a little while to 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 sync up to a to a the well time you can get from one satellite but to get a gps you've right, got you to have three. at least threat yeah you need at least three so it takes a little while um but th you know this thing is small enough that and i hit it in the car yeah and just had the antenna next to the window so you know let's say if i had a uh, teenager that i wanted to track where they were going and when they were going somewhere uh, this would be really easy to uh, to put in a car and hide it or, you know, track your, you know, if you want to track where you're going. Um, it's it's really it's really easy to track where you're going. So, so let me ask this question. Um, the data you're storing on the card, what kind of data is it? Like, is, is it compressed data or is it the whole data no, string? This is, just the, this is just the raw GPS string that, uh, string of data that, that's coming off the that's coming off the unit i i didn't do any compression so what, do you do you figure out how much how long you can store that on a card to the card filled up you know i didn't even bother uh this this was uh this data file that we're looking at was me running around and and we'll get to google earth here in a minute uh to show what you can do with the data once you've captured it um you know, I went to several places and drove around town, and um, uh, you know, I think this file is 140k, 150k, something like that. That's it. That's crazy. That's that's it. <laughs> yeah. So, and and this is a two gig uh, SD card that I have on here, and the Arduino will support a four gig. So, yeah, you could go a long time right. with this on. Now in in the in my car when the power shuts off the uh you know when you turn the car off the power to the usb is shut off right so it only tracks when the car is on right yeah exactly so you, if you had a somebody you're trying to track like you you said about your kids or something like that right you would only be, you basically could put it in a box under the hood somewhere and when the car when the car was running it would be recorded every so often just go out and grab the sd card that's right. Uh, so it, it wouldn't be a lot of trouble. Now this this data file right here, uh, I did a little research and I discovered that this seems to be this GPS visualizer is the preferred location to convert your raw GPS data into Google Earth data. And you can see here's uh, my here's the file that I used and. I fooled around with these, you know, it's got some nice tracking options and, you know, I, I finally just played with these until I, in, until I came up with something that I liked. Uh, and then it, it makes a, uh, KMZ file, KML file. Yeah. KML. I know what, I don't know what that is. Okay. It, 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 it gives you one of those files and then you can download it and then you can put it into Google earth. And this is the, um, this is the raw data file. Um, where'd it go? Uh, this file right here, this is the data that was collected. So, so you can, you can see that I plugged it in that right, this location right there, that's the post office. And I left the post office and then drove up here to the office supply place, turned around, came back, and you can tell, and I'm gonna, you know, tell on myself, you can tell in this highway you know, it's, this is the right lane. Yeah. Okay. I was in that lane 
and it tells you, you know, it tells you how fast I was going. So one of these, it uh, says that I was going a little faster than than I was supposed to. So and so drove down the highway, came back. For uh, if somebody is interested in trivia, right there is where the old Texas Stadium used to be. And it's still, for somebody who lives in Dallas, it still looks funny not driving past there and not seeing Texas Stadium anymore. Yeah, right there at Loop 12 and 183. Yep. And they blew it up a couple years ago. Did they really blow it up? They, it's blown up and gone. Wow. Now it's uh, some shipping company has built there has built a terminal there and you can kind of see the outline right there of yeah i mean you can kind of see the shape yeah it's still there that that's where the stadium used to be and now they've got this you know shipping company owns it which is kind of depressing but uh and then you can see where i cruised down the highway and then got off the highway and Right here is, I stopped right there, and that's a, uh, that's a grocery store where I went to, and then started, here's Love Field, for those who know Dallas, and, oh, oh, I'm sorry, I told you wrong. Right here is the grocery store, and then right there is the 7-Eleven where I got my Slurpee fix, since I'm pretty much addicted to the Slurpees, and then I came up here, and was stopping there is a electronic store right there and I don't know what happened to the last couple data points but uh, yeah so it it tracked me around town and got me in the right lanes and and when I and ratted me out on the speed because you know you you click on one of these data points and it tells you how fast I'm going. Yeah. That's so, pretty neat. So it's uh it was really useful and simple code and worked really well. Um, now as I was talking about earlier, I did have uh, a little trouble with the Leo and getting it getting it working before I switched to Nuno and one of the things that um, I got from tech support is to put a blank sketch, you load a blank sketch onto the Arduino, uh, which is just, uh, it'll be in the show notes, but it's basically a setup and a loop with nothing in the, no code, and then switch it back to the pins uh, zero and one for regular um, receiving and transmission of data over the serial connection, and then use this U center. Uh, software and then it'll you can figure out which satellites it's seeing what you know you you get a much better feel for what the raw data is um, unfortunately this is only available in Windows and I'm on my Mac tonight so I can't show this in use but uh, this was really it was really nice software and really actually really interesting to see all the information that you could find um, the, you know, that the GPS is reading. So, uh, a very nice little, uh, this was a nice little project Yeah. this week. So very interesting. So, um, very interesting again, who's the manufacturer of that? Um, I, Ted, I T I T E A D studios is the name of the company. Uh, and I'm not quite sure how to pronounce it. Um, and they they have quite a few products and uh, yeah, nice product, good tech support, reasonably priced. Uh, I was I was really happy with it. So, yep, yeah, that's yeah. very very interesting, very cool. Yeah, nice nice little project and easily something that that if you wanted to. Even if you just wanted to track yourself, uh, you know, you need to log mileage, you know, for the company and that you work for. Uh, this would be really easy to to strip that data out and yeah. not waste a lot of time chasing your tail, you know, with a logbook or something or 
you know, of course, first thing I thought of was my, my teenager and where are they and when are they and how fast are they going? Right. Right. So, <laughs> so nice it is a nice, nice project. Yeah. Very good. So, um, we have people in the chat room tonight. Jim and Scotty are in the chat room. They've been been chatting. So, um, did you see the? Or maybe you sent this to me. Uh, Jim sent me uh, an email today about how cold it was where he is located. <laughs> so, um, I sorry. think it was like negative twenty five. And if he's in Canada, that's Celsius. Ugh. So okay, that <laughs> is why I live in Texas. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. I am. Because I am allergic to real winter. Yeah, I'm gonna look it up here real quick. I'm pretty sure it was negative twenty-five. Um, no, that makes me cold just thinking about it. Yeah, it did me too. So, um, as you guys were chatting in the chat room, I noticed um, Jim said about he got a commercial from um, Justin, and um, this for future reference. If you watch it on. Um, what is it? Daily Motion. There are no commercials, so you can get commercial free on Daily Motion. That's kind of the reason we kind of went that direction. Let's see. Trying to find his uh his uh email. So I was pretty blown away by how cold it was. Well, you know, some I of can't the see it though. Se- you know, some of the temperature sensors we've uh, played with on the show don't go that cold don't don't go that cold no i know (laughs) i know (laughs) the one that i use the the one that i've used a couple times for the show only goes to zero zero celsius or zero zero Zero, uh zero celsius okay so 32 fahrenheit so freezing it goes to freezing right that's because here i don't need i don't need one that goes no, you're right. Older than that, very often. Right. Uh, I need one that gets that goes hot, but I don't need one that goes cold. Yeah, I just found it. it's negative twenty five, where he is. Oh yeah, he even said it. Negative twenty five Celsius. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that's just crazy. I complain because it's freezing today. Actually, it was thirty two today. Thirty two okay. Fahrenheit. All right, Jim. I had shorts on today. <laughs> That's not fair. <laughs> okay. Of course, you guys laugh at us when it's a hundred and hundred something here, and yeah, but if it's in the summertime, it's pretty dry. Ninety-five, in, yeah, ninety-five percent humidity and a hundred and five temperature. So, yeah, it's only you've been in the spring there. So yeah. in the summertime, it's pretty dry. It, most of the time, yeah. Yeah. So thanks, Jim. Definitely appreciate it. So I noticed when we were scrolling back, scrolling back here. Um, Scotty uses Code Igniter and Expression Engine, so that's interesting. We have some coders in here too. And tonight wasn't a show with any interesting code. Mm, no, tonight's code was pretty pretty straightforward. the the libra- The soft serial library and the tiny GPS they pretty much take care of all the hard work for us. So, you want to give a little bit of a hint to what the other thing you're working on is? Well, the uh, uh, in the 555 timer episode, I mentioned a decade counter, and I've gotten a couple requests to explain what is a decade counter. So uh, I've got a little project that I'm working on to, um, and I had it working, and then decided I didn't want to use a 555 timer. I wanted it to be interactive, so I tore it all apart, and haven't put it back together yet. So, but a simple decade counter, which is a basic IC that uh, that all it does is count. It's very simple, easy to use, and it's a it's a great little IC to have in your uh, toolbox of goodies to use. So yeah, we should probably that'll, saw, be, that'll be coming up. We should also note that there's no CPU required for that either. Nope, and that's why. I do, well, and I had it cooked up to the 555. So as a timer and then decided to take that out and put a switch in where I was the time where I, my button pushes is the timer. Right. So you can use it for other things, physical switches, physical limit switches or anything like that. That's right. So Jim wants to know, does it count how old you are, Bob? 
Uh, in decades? No. <laughs> Although it counts more than I than my decade count. So. What is it? An eight bit decade counter? Yeah. Well, actually, the one it's going to be a ten. Ten. Yeah, this is a forty seventeen, so it's a ten, uh, ten count. All right, good. All right, well, actually, it's, we've only been going for thirty minutes, so we're kind of short tonight. But that's okay. That's okay. Yeah. So, unless we have any other questions or anything else we want to cover, we can probably say good night. I'm I'm done for the night. All that's right. What I got. All right. That sounds good. All right. All right. We'll see you everybody. See you next week. For show notes for this show, contacts, and more, go to the techzen.tv website where you can get show notes for all of our shows. We love to hear from our viewers and listeners. We have an email, a Twitter, and a phone number where you can contact us for each show. For details, visit the techzen.tv website and get the show details. You can also make a video and upload it somewhere like YouTube or Vimeo and then just send us a link. You never know, you may see your video in a future show. You can get all of our shows delivered automatically to your favorite device by going to your favorite podcast website like iTunes and subscribing. Each of our shows also has a YouTube channel you can subscribe to to get regular updates. Our shows are also available on most internet radio networks like Stitcher and TuneIn Radio. You can also watch and listen to our shows on Xbox, TiVo, and Roku. You can even find us on your Zoom.